All right. Um, thank you all. Um, and first of all, great to see everyone here. Uh, my name is Viren. Uh, I am one of the co-founders here at Orcus um, and one of the contributors um, to Conductor. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today and, and show essentially is kind of the monitoring aspect of Conductor. So you now we have seen now kind of how Conductor is being used um, every time we go for a chest X-ray or you know when we try to watch Netflix, um, all those features. Now, how about you know the operational part of it, right? Like when you are running Conductor in your kind of um, organization, like how do you kind of go around monitoring how your system is doing? Like you know, there are two parts to the monitoring, right? There is one part around system health. Like is my conductor server running perfectly fine? How is the CPU, JVM, given this a job is uh, server uh, doing? But more importantly, what you want to know is, you know, how is my kind of, you know, overall system doing in terms of the business processes? Now, if you think about conductor, when you model your business processes using conductor, conductor has a lot of insights in terms of what is happening with your processes, right? Like in terms of your code execution, in terms of you know the failure rates and and whatever not. Um, like if you think about it, uh, conductor knows at a given point of time how many times, for example, you know a certain business process gets executed, how many times certain things are failing, uh, and and you can get a lot of insights into it. Um, Conductor publishes a kind of a lot of such metrics. Um, and what I'm going to show here essentially is uh, the dashboards that we use for monitoring some of the health of the server, as well as in terms of the business aspect of it, more importantly on the business side of it. So let me share my screen. Um, and there you go. So as all you can, as you all can see, um, Basically, you know, we we leverage uh, Prometheus and Grafana as a stack. Um, like Conductor has is pretty open and and very pluggable system when it comes to metrics. Um, um, kind of coming out of Netflix, it supports Netflix Atlas, uh, but it also has support for, for example, Datadog. If you are you know using Datadog as your primary way of you know collecting metrics and creating dashboards and everything. Uh, the other uh, thing that is available is Prometheus, which is what we have been using, which is an open source. Uh, metrics uh, uh, server, and we use that with Grafana, which gives very powerful uh, dashboards for visualization. And let's say if neither of these things work for you, uh, Conductor can also publish the metrics into a log file, which then you can you know use it to ingest into um, a third-party system, right? Like uh, maybe a custom built-in or something that uh, may not be supported out of the box by Conductor. Um, now. What we do in Conductor essentially is that you know, we capture metrics about two key aspects of the system, right? One is, as I mentioned, right, system health. Um, so since Conductor is running on on JVM, it you know it it captures you know the JVM pressure in terms of you know what's my memory utilization, uh, you know what's the max allocated, and you know that kind of gives you operational insights, you know, especially if you are responsible for running Conductor in your kind of uh, place, right? Uh, and similarly, CPU, uh, a lot of tasks in Conductor could be very CPU intensive, especially like for example, if you are running a lot of lambda tasks on conductor, you want to kind of monitor and make sure that no, it is provisioned. What I want to focus more on is kind of the operational aspect of conductor, right? Kind of features and kind of powerful insights it can give you. So like here, one thing that I have here is you now I have a kind of environment set up with a few workflows that are running. Like for example, here I have some workflows around email notification, uh, application processing, payment processing, and what I can see essentially is you know, what's the P99 for a workflow duration? Like, and this is the time it takes for a workflow to get completed, right? From start to finish. Um, and of course, you know, not all the workflows are designed to be exactly same in terms of its duration, right? Some workflows could be very short running duration, like the one that I'm showing, uh, showing right? Like this workflow basically sends out an email um, and you don't expect this to run for, you know, uh, minutes or hours. Um, so, you know, the typical expectation here would be that like, you know, on a median, maybe, few hundred millisecond is a reasonable time uh, for the system to send out an email and get a confirmation from the SMTP server. That could be some more long, long running workflows that could run for much longer period of time. You know, it could be running for days, months, uh, weeks. Uh, but, you know, conductor essentially captures the duration every time a workflow completes and publishes the metric. And that can be used to visualize and see what's the average duration of a workflow. Um, and, and you can kind of capture the trend lines here, for example, right? Or uh, send out alerts, like, you know, if your workflow breaches the threshold, um, 
that you have configured uh, looking at the historical data or you know you can also use uh, computation through grafana or uh, things like that the other thing essentially is you know how many what's the rate of completion of workflows like let's say you are running as june was uh, mentioning right large scale data pipelines and you expect 10000 workflows to be completing every hour for example or every minute or even every second right it kind of gives you insights into you know how many workflows at a given point of time are completing and uh, you know if the rate falls uh, you know there is probably in some other underlying cause that you want to probably investigate maybe send out a pager duty uh, or things like that that brings to another dashboard essentially kind of the failure rate right how how often my workflows are failing like workflows could be failing because there are some business exceptions happening uh, people are starting workflows with invalid data there could be number of things right and you want to kind of have insights into it and typically you want this number to be very low right like uh, but in a large scale system especially when the workflows are kicked off with uh, you know inputs coming from the maybe end users um, probably you know they might fail because you know it fails to do some validation or misses the data and things like that you know again you no know, conductor publishes detailed uh, metrics in terms of every time a workflow fails it publishes a counter um, and and you can essentially use that to kind of visualize send out alerts and, and things like that the other important piece essentially is the number of tasks that are running so if you think about right like conductor workflows are what um, the workflow is a combination of um, is a combination of you know uh, tasks um, that are kind of chained together and what a uh, conductor server basically does is it captures a snapshot of number of tasks that are running at a given point of time and publishes the the metrics so like for example i have an upload task here right which is responsible for uploading stuff to say s3 and what i want to measure is that you know make sure is that you no know, this task um, always have you know workers available um, so you know if if i see that like you know in this case for example something around 26 27 uh, tasks are pending at a given point of time and that's my trend line and that's maybe okay for my particular use case uh, now imagine the scenario where my s3 keys have expired or there is a problem with my bucket um, or there is a mother underlying issue the task will start to have backlog or maybe my workers are not running right in your any of the situations you know you will start to see there is a back pressure building up and you know that could be a reason why you want to kind of uh, go and uh, notify someone to take a look at it but more importantly it also allows you to do auto scaling so if you think about it right like you don't want to over provision um, your workers at the same time you also don't want to under provision but how do you know when to scale up when to scale down right one way is you look at historical data and figure out the timelines um, and, and you know do some manual intervention or write some scripts to do that the other option essentially is you monitor constantly what's my queue depth um, for a given task worker and um, you know put some rules around it and connect that uh, information to your kubernetes or if you are someone at netflix for example right through spinnaker um, and put in the auto scaling policies an example here would be you know if my task um, backlog goes above certain threshold in a 10 minute window uh, i would double the number of workers and if it kind of reduces uh, below a threshold then i will kind of you know uh, half the number of uh, uh, workers that are available until you know minimum uh, threshold is set and that allows me to kind of effectively manage my cost i don't over provision i don't under provision and you know make sure the system is running uh, like a well oiled machine And this same thing here, uh, like workflows, right? Essentially, it also gives you visibility into how many tasks are failing at a given point of time, and uh, you know, appropriately notified. If you think about it, right, in a distributed environment, you could have workflow with multiple tasks, let's say ten different tasks, but you know, different teams, different people might be responsible for it. So you know, when a workflow fails, um, who do you go and notify? Uh, like, who should be responsible for it, right? But with connector, you can actually go slightly. Uh, more detail uh, to see that like you know hey if my email notification task is failing the notification or the alert uh, should be sent out to the infra team if my business validations are failing constantly maybe the application team should be notified and they should take a look at it so you know you can actually route your messages right to the right people instead of kind of having it to go through somebody to triage it and figure out exactly who is responsible for it 
but that's another powerful feature that we find it very useful in conductor um and then there are other things right like for example um workers are typically pole based so you know they are constantly polling the server to see if they have work and then execute it conductor also kind of gives you insight into you know how often the workers are polling and um you know, typically depending upon your kind of worker uh, workload, um, you know, this number might be high, low, but uh, typically never zero, right? If you see your workers have stopped polling, that is an indicator that no, either there is a network partitioning that is happening, workers are gone down, um, but either way they are not polling, right? And maybe somebody should be notified. Um, again, like who to notify, um, you can do this based on the task name, right? Like if email task is not polling anymore, I'm going to set up and send an alert to the the platform team saying that hey something is wrong with the workers i don't see any polling happening and just to kind of at a high level right so also kind of conductor also kind of gives you overall api rate in terms of how many api requests are coming in at every second what's the typical error rate by error codes um, and this kind of gives you some amount of operational insight in terms of you know um, how your systems is being used right also kind of it gives you an idea right like let's say if you see a lot of uh, request coming in to do things like um, uh, you know get the uh, the urls like for example you know getting schedules or um, uh, terminating workflows or getting user info things that you don't expect that to be very high um, you know this could be an indication of some anomaly some some code bug somewhere so it kind of gives you that level of insights as well uh, to see if everything is going normal right and and same with api error rates like right? Uh, especially if you are putting conductor behind authentication, then some amount of 401s will be expected. But if you see a very high error rate, maybe you know somebody's API tokens are messed up and uh, they need to be notified. So this is kind of a very a small subset of metrics. Like overall, conductor publishes uh, 100 plus different metrics. Um, but what I felt was that this few uh, the almost a dozen metrics are very important that we kind of we ourselves monitor very constantly and would be pretty useful overall. I'll take a pause here. Uh, if there are any questions, happy to answer those. So there is a question from Flavio. Mm -hmm. uh, he mentioned a nice dashboard we're in. Uh, his question is, uh, you mentioned operational aspect. Do you envision this extended to, to give users a view of the business as well? For example, how many workflows ran with workflow input XYZ over time? From those, how many succeeded? How many failed? These are very business-related questions and should be user-driven and flexible and will change per use case. Absolutely. I think this is the power of conductor, right? Because every workflow that you start has all the inputs and the outcomes. Um, so essentially, um, there are a couple of things you can do here, right? Like um, uh, you can start to publish this metrics uh, and probably you don't want to publish everything, right? But let's say there are some key metrics. Take, for example, um in a customer service call this could be uh, or customer service specific workflow this could be for example uh, issue type right uh, how many workflows for a given issue type uh, as an input are completing within my sla a very good way to kind of see right like let's say if my issue type is uh, payment error like am i able to close them all in a reasonable amount of time if not you know what is going on here right like if i am using some sort of qc right um, uh, a quality check on, on my content. Um, and if it is routed through um, a specific vendor and vendor ID is an input here, um, can I trend line, uh, you know, for a given vendor, what's the typical turnaround time uh, for them to come back with the, you know, the, the QC on the content or not. And then I can make decision whether, you know, this vendor kind of meets our SLA guidelines or not and things like that, right? Should we need a contract with them? Um, so yeah, this is, this is the power of conductor, right? Um, um, and absolutely, we we do see this uh, being exposed to business users as well. It will probably need a separate, slightly different kind of a view of it, but uh, depending upon your visualization uh, system, right? Like we find Grafana to be very powerful enough. But yeah, the important thing is that you have the data available, uh, how you visualize, what you do with it. Uh, it's pretty flexible. Right. Uh, also, to, to add on to that uh, response, I would also like to mention say that since the workflow input, uh, the inputs to workflows have like high cardinality, you could also consider uh, indexing the data that you have in Elasticsearch and building dashboards off of those uh, since you're looking at uh, these metrics over time. 
So maybe that, that's something that you could consider. And that's something that uh, we have done at Netflix as well. And that we had shared in uh, a blog post, uh, I think a couple of years ago, uh, a, a sample dashboard on like, what are the different types of workflows that are running? Like uh, you could create uh, those metrics uh, to, uh, to, to also graph uh, workflow failures and completions based off of workflow inputs. That's something that you could look at as well. Uh, another question uh, from Shantanu, can you generate email alerts for failed tasks? Yes, absolutely. So uh, again, like this depends upon um, how you are configuring, but like, for example, if you are using Grafana, it has integrations where um, you can um, you can generate email alerts saying this task is, is failing. And, you know, whether you send it for every failure or do you send it in aggregate over a period of time, um, Grafana that way is very flexible in terms of allowing you to define um, uh, those uh, conditions. That's all the questions that we have. Uh, thank you, Varen and Pony, for that presentation. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, we are at the end of all our presentations uh, for today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining.